All right, folks, I want to welcome everybody to our cooking show today. Folks, we're so excited. This is going to be the, uh, first thing. the first time that we're cooking any meat on this new Barrel Pro smoker. Now, this is the uh, classic size, I believe it is. And they make one that's smaller. They obviously make them much bigger. But this thing right here, check out my previous video on the unboxing, so to speak, and my first uh, initial thoughts about this thing. This thing is a tank. Uh, last night we did the seasoning, and I rubbed it down with canola oil and fired it for about three, four hours. So this thing is seasoned, cleaned out the firebox. Got two chickens from the market and uh, some chicken wings that are going to be our test subjects here. So folks joining me is the beautiful Florentina. This is my <laughs> wife number two's uh, younger sister. And tell everybody, uh, how old are you Flo? 20. 20 years old. And how old is your baby boy? Seven months. He's got a seven month old baby boy <laughs> down in the village. Shout out to moms and everybody in the village uh, watching after the baby while she's up here hang, hanging out with us for a little while. I told her, I said, baby, listen, today you're going to be my assistant on the cooking show. <laughs> and folks, she's rocking these Daisy Dukes. <laughs> uh, just, she's the Vanna White of the show. So I got some, I got some eye candy here. <laughs> I got a, a badass grill. I mean, this <laughs> grill is absolutely just awesome. Uh, so what we're gonna do, just check this thing out. It just, mmm, smells like it's seasoned. That thing's just ready to go. So what we're gonna do is put two chickens here, put the chicken wings on the top rack. And once we get cooking, we'll go mobile. We're shooting on the iPhone 12 mini using Hollyland Lark 150 wireless microphones. It is windy out here. Yeah, I can put the little lapel mics and make it look less uh, obvious that we're wearing wireless mics. But with the wind noise, we got these big uh, dead cats on there. Should cut down the, the wind noise. That's what they're called. They call, they call these things a dead cat. <laughs> it keeps, dead cat. Yeah, it keeps the wind from uh, going on our audio. So we're real excited about today's cook. And my goodness. <laughs> wow. Four beautiful ladies rolling by. Two on the trike. My goodness. Did I mention I'm here in the Philippines? Coming to you from Angeles City. The weather here in, in the tropics right now in Southeast Asia is absolutely beautiful. It's just like sunny days, cool nights. It's a cool breeze coming on out here. Uh, so we're getting, gonna get down to cooking. Anyhow, folks, thanks for joining us on today's cooking show, Rocking Out the Barrel Pro Smoker. My goodness, I'm excited. Are you excited to eat this chicken? Yeah. Yeah? The whole chicken. <laughs> Yeah, Flo, Flo said she wanted one Challenge. whole chicken to herself to see if she could eat the whole chicken. Now, I'm pretty sure she can eat the whole challenge. chicken. Challenge. It's not a challenge, honey. I know you can eat it. No, yeah, I can't eat it. And there's been a few comments about Flo, about she's getting a little thick since she first got here. But I told her when she first got, got up here with us, I said, hey, in, in one month, you're going to be thick like your sister. Because... Mm. Folks, I cook for these ladies every night. I mean, I throw down a feast every night for these ladies. <laughs> and it's inevitable, inevitable, it was inevitable, that she's gonna put on a few kilos and be a little bit more thick like her sister because she's eating all Before my- Before 96 pounds, hmm? 96? 96? I, I think 101. Yeah, she, she's about five, six more pounds than you. <laughs> but you're gonna catch up with her. I got faith in you. <laughs> Just keep eating my good cooking, girl. Hope All so. right, folks. Let's uh, let's light this candle. Let's do it. All right, folks. So what are we gonna do here? If you'll just follow me down here. This is the uh, Barrel Pro charcoal chimney, and that thing is built like a tank. I mean, it's heavy. It's made to last a lifetime. Uh, and it's just the same quality as this as this grill right here. So what I'm going to do to cheat is uh, just fill it up with charcoal, and I'm going to put it over here on the G-Watt 
like I did last night. Now look, if you've never used a charcoal chimney, all you got to do is put the charcoal in the top and light literally one piece of paper on the bottom and, and this thing will get going. But since I've got this gas, it's too easy to just turn it on and, uh, and cheat. All right, now she'll just shoot right here on the charcoal. This is not charcoal that you're used to seeing in America. Because guess what, Cochise, I'm not in America. I'm in the Philippines, this ain't Kansas. That's so, old. Yeah, so this is, uh, I say homemade. I mean, some people make it up in the mountains, some people make it at their house. This ain't coming out of a mass-produced factory, most of it's not. And so it's a different type of charcoal. This burns a lot longer, in my opinion, than the charcoal in America. There's no additives, there's no accelerants. The uh, only thing about this sometimes, no, not this, this is dry as a bone, but sometimes you'll get charcoal that's a little wet. They put it in the little plastic bags and get some moisture in there. You have to lay it out in the sun sometimes to dry this stuff out. But look, everybody has a different opinion about smoking. You know, some people say, oh man, you got to put wood because I went through, you know, two bags of charcoal. And so um, last night I burned too much wood. And I'm going to tell you why. This charcoal lasts a lot longer than, than what you get in America. And so everybody who says put more wood than charcoal or else you'll be burning bags and bags of charcoal. Well, this is a little different literally about well I would say last night I used probably one whole thing because I started it out here and I added a few pieces that shit burned for three four hours um, so basically on my setup on my smoker I think I'm just gonna use the charcoal for the heat and the wood for the flavor I'm not gonna be depending upon the wood to maintain the temperature Okay, but that's just me and that's my setup. So let me reach over here, see if I can get a tune out of this trombone. Uh, the lady's already, because they, they just cooked some sardines on here. Uh, by the way, that that was some kind of smell coming off them sardines there, Flo. Mm, no. <laughs> was it delicious? Yeah. Okay, all right, I'll take your word for it. Look at more fire. Oh, there you go. So I got the heat going on. It's pretty cool how they, instead of just putting holes, they put Barrel Pro all around it for the vents. Pretty good design right there. Folks, there's a lot of background noise. It's because I'm here on my balcony right on this road. And if you've never been to the Philippines, it's a, uh, it's a loud place. The Philippines <laughs> is a loud country. Um, that's just the way it is. I describe Thailand as a very quiet country, and I describe the Philippines as a very noisy, noisy country. So if there's background noise, you have to deal with it, because that's where I'm at. Usually you hear roosters crowing, <laughs> dogs barking, loud tricycle uh, mufflers, loud motorbike mufflers, and loud Filipina sisters by the name of Flo and <laughs> Sometimes. Fatima. I mean, not sometimes. Ah, all, sometimes I am loud. <laughs> all the time. No. But she's being very quiet on today's video because she knows there's a microphone on it, right? <laughs> Which is kind of funny because when I was setting the levels, the way she was talking, I had to set her level one level higher than mine. <laughs> only because she's shy, because she's on camera and she knows that there's a microphone on her. <laughs> but what I suspected was, you know, I think I've got mine set at eight. I bumped it up a little. I was, I was shooting six on that previous video and you guys said it was too quiet. So I bumped it up to eight. That's what I'm testing today. So I figured I'd have to turn hers down to like a two. <laughs> but she's being real quiet and shy because she, she knows I got a wireless microphone on her. It's already burning? Yeah. Just a little bit more. Like I said, my, my charcoal here, folks, is so dry that it's not going to take long for this, this to catch on. It's just, just 
a little bit of, little bit of uh, heat from the gas burner here. Now, I made a mistake last night of putting the charcoal on there or putting the charcoal in the firebox before it was hot enough. Because, you know, once you put it in there, it sort of chokes it off a little bit. So I'm going to let this charcoal chimney get red hot and get the fire coming out before I dump it in there. And what I did, you know, I had the damper open on wide open. And I wanted to get more air, so I opened up the, uh, the door, the side door, but then all the smoke came out. You know, I want the smoke to keep going in that direction. Uh, so anyhow, lesson learned, get the charcoal hot, get it flaming hot, get the flames coming out the top, then dump it in the firebox. Then once that temperature gets up, I'm looking for uh, two and a quarter. It's pretty much what it, where it hovered around last night, it was two and a quarter, maybe 250. It didn't get up any higher than that. But again, I didn't fill. I, I didn't put a whole lot of charcoal in there, so I'm pretty much pretty confident that with basically one of these, I can maintain about two and a quarter temperature throughout this cook, and that's what I'm looking for. And I think two to three hours on the chicken, from what I from what I think. But these are smaller chicken than what you're used to getting in the U.S. So the guys who say you know two hours, three hours. Mm -hmm. Oh. No, this shirt. Oh, yeah, it's dropping down there. Okay, all right, so we got this thing heated up. And what I'm gonna do is set it right here. Use this, uh, this aluminum wok. Wow. And, and just let it burn. That's all you gotta do. So see, we gotta send one of these down to your village, Flo. Everybody in the village cooks with wood and they got various methods to start it with. A lot of times they're cutting up plastic and you know doing things like that to get it started. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna send them one of these Barrel Pro uh, charcoal chimneys down to the village. Literally, it takes one piece of paper and you put it under there and light it, but just because of uh, Hollywood and the entertainment, we just cheated using the <laughs> gas stove over here. To make it easy. <laughs> yeah, make it a little easier. <laughs> So folks, what we're working with out here, uh, obviously we've got this, got this big, huge bag of charcoal here in the Philippines, they call it ooling. And if you'll spin around and show them our fire suppression system, our fire extinguisher right there. That's our fire extinguisher, fire suppression, in case we have any mishaps. <laughs> but we're on a concrete balcony with concrete walls. So I don't, I don't think we got too much to worry about. Yeah. Shout out to Fatima, she's in, in there watching the babies. The babies are curious, obviously they want to come out here and see what's going on. But when you're smoking, you know, that firebox gets, gets hot, it's lower, it's easy for babies to come over there and touch that. You know, the barrel don't get that hot, but uh, you know, when, when I'm cooking in the kitchen or barbecuing, try to keep the babies just out of the cooking operation to prevent any accidents. All right, so that's going pretty good. I think we'll go ahead and dump it in here. Take a look in there, folks. And I'm just gonna dump that inside there. And what's awesome is with this particular smoker, it's just easy. It just fits in there perfect. Keep this, uh, I'll film for just a second, there you go, thank you. I'm just putting this underneath here. Not that it's needed, but just in case one of them pieces of charcoal jump out. So let that heat up just a little bit more. And this Barrel Pro, got these hooks on here, to tighten it down. And I just need to open this up till we get it going. What you think, Flo? <laughs> I will get the wood. Uh, yeah, and that's the question. The question is, what wood are we going to go with? And I'm thinking today we go with cherry. Cherry? We have, yeah, cherry wood. We have some chips in there. Yeah. What we're going to do is soak them in a little bit of water. So once we get the grill up to the right temperature with the charcoal, then we're going to drop the, uh, the cherry wood on there to start the smoke. Cherry wood. 
Yeah, Cherry. Don't you have a cousin named Cherry? What's her I name? Cherry Ann That's and right. Cherry Rose. You got Cherry Ann and Cherry Rose. Yeah. They're sisters, right? Huh? They're sisters? Yeah. Yeah, so they got cousins who are sisters named Cherry Ann and Cherry Rose. The daughter of Ati Mai Mai. Yeah, Ati Mai Mai. So big shout out to Ati Mai Mai <laughs> and Cherry and Cherry. Now, if she has one more kid, is it going to be a Cherry? I don't know. Speaking of Cherry. Yeah, show everybody what we got right there, folks. Hold, up, hold it up, Flo. So this actually come out of the U.S. Wait, and my wood that I had yesterday uh, came from somewhere here in the Philippines, I reckon. But today I'm gonna go with the cherry for the actual cook. Okay, so like I was saying before, I put that down there and for good reason. I opened it up to get a little bit more airflow. Three pieces of charcoal come tumbling down. It's perfect. Uh, I'm not worried about that walk. That walk's been to the beach and been through heck, so I'm not worried about it. This coconut chopper here, this is a machete. I call it a coconut chopper. This thing works perfect for everything from chopping down trees to opening coconuts to using it for your charcoal management. You can peel onions with this thing, cut up potatoes, everything in the world for that $2 coconut chopper. And then you can add just a little bit more, a little bit more charcoal but it, it's getting going. Take a while for this temperature to start rising. It took probably, shit, a good, at least 20 minutes last night before that thing started even going up. Got a little bit of smoke coming through there. Fun. Okay, so uh, how'd you marinate the chicken, darling? I put salt, Yeah. chili powder, and Spanish paprika. Okay, so salt, chili this powder, Spanish paprika. Oh, I got, I got some, uh, got some charcoal on my nose. Uh, okay, what do I got right here? Got it. <laughs> Folks, you're dealing with charcoal. About oh, now. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Hey, charcoal's uh, dusty. All right, so I was not originally going to put anything on the chicken other than just maybe salt and pepper. Um, just to try it out and figure out which wood I like, but you know what? They want to put some sauce on it, or they want to put some spice on it. Okay, yeah, all right, let's do it, because that's how we're going to cook it anyhow. All right, so let's go check the temp, Flo. Come over here and tell us what the temperature's at. You got good eyes, I don't have to put my glasses on. Almost 250. Almost 250? Yeah. All right, so we want to stay we want to be right at, I think, two and a quarter, 250, somewhere in there. So we're, we're good to go. And what a lot of people do, they say, hey, take it up, you know, pass where you want it, and it's easy to bring it back down. I mean, the minute we open the lid and start putting the chicken on, the temperature's going to drop. And obviously, we can adjust it with the chimney and with the damper right here. So this thing Coming didn't take as long as it did last night because I knew what I was doing. So we're ready. I think we're ready to put yeah. the chicken on here. All right, folks. A couple of chicken. <laughs> Got two whole chickens and a bunch of wings. I'm gonna pop the top on this here, Jim. Oh yeah, nice sturdy lid with the with the back stops there. All right, so I'm gonna try to get my chickens on here. Got, she's got the whole chickens on top. Chicken wing system. And what my plan is, folks, everybody always busts my chops because I'm wearing gloves when I cook. <laughs> but you know what? When you're dealing with hot stuff and charcoal, stuff like that. All right, so I'll take the gloves off. And I'm going to put this bad boy, I guess I'm going to put him belly down. Down, and the whole, and the like, like chicken that. wings. So what I'm gonna do is try not to burn myself, and I'm gonna slide this dude to the back in the middle, okay, with his head facing that way. And then what I'm gonna do is take this guy, same thing, face down, but I'm gonna put him facing that way. Now the reason that I'm putting him in the middle is because in one hour, I'm just gonna take this thing out and I'm gonna turn him around. 
But since I've only got two, I'm going to keep them in the middle. It's obviously hotter if you put them closer to the flame. It's cooler if you put them closer to the, uh, to the smokestack. Now these wings, I'm going to put these wings up here on the top deck to test out the top deck. I'm going to try to keep them in the middle. I'm trying to burn myself there. Uh, again, I'm going I'm to keep these guys in the middle as well because there's handles that they've welded onto these racks. And so in the middle of the smoke, I'd say at one hour, I'm going to turn them around. This one's a little thick, so I'll put him closer to the fire end. Okay, so that's like Fatima right there. And then this one's like Flo is right now. <laughs> I'm going to put her over here closer to the exhaust. Now, do we have the drip pan in the proper position? It appears that we do, but I think I need to bring this chicken closer this way to make sure that I'm using the drip pan effectively. It's got a big, huge drip pan. It's going to make it a lot easier to clean up, and that thing is already dripping. Flo, well, just come over here and give them a little bit of close-up. That's what we're working with, folks. Now, what they say on smoking, you know what, this has got to go that way a little bit. Maybe this is a bad idea, because I don't, I don't want the chicken juice to drop down on the bottom of my barrel. Put this one here and put on one here. You know what, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with that advice, because I, I don't want chicken juice when I got a nice, big, huge You've got drip, some drip space. pan. There we go. Now we got them centered over the drip pan. No problem. It's going to be, be bombs away into the drip pan. Now, Flo, there's a fundamental flaw in, right. in, in uh, oh, it's my fault. It's your fault. Folks, I just got chicken grease all over my brand new grill because, let me, let me tell on myself, I was about to blame Flo, but I got to tell on myself because I should have done this. But I went over there and I got chicken grease, chicken juice, all over my brand new smoker. <laughs> Shit happens though, okay? All right, there we go. Now you take a look at the temp. You know, it's obviously dipped back down. But in a few minutes, it'll be right back up. We're gonna try to keep her around two and a quarter. Damn, I already stained this thing <laughs> with the paprika. Okay, so we got that chicken on the, on the smoker at 11 a.m. Got the timer set for one hour. And now all we do is just keep an eye on the temperature, make sure it don't get too high, too low. Low and slow, as they say. All right, folks, the so flow is gonna put a handful of cherry wood chips down in the water. That should be plenty. Just let those soak for a little bit. You see that? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that should be plenty right there, girl. Thank you. Beautiful van of white over here. We'll soak those for just a second and then uh, drop them in there. Get the cherry smoke going. Last night I had her watching the smoker, folks. And I think she really loved this job because she sat out here, played her Facebook. <laughs> All she had to do was keep an eye on the temperature. This is a perfect job for a Filipina. You loved that job, didn't you? She got her a chair. So if, if I stop filming, she'll go on Facebook. <laughs> and I just gotta hit her up and say, hey, Flo, what's the temp here, baby? She'll call it in on the, on the radio. Soak these uh, cherry chips. So what we'll go ahead and do, pop the top on that bad boy. And we'll just sprinkle some chips in there. Start to smoke. Let's see. That's enough for now. Now we're adding the flavor. It sounds like New Year's Eve is already going on across the way. <laughs> I think that the kids know that I'm over here filming and they think that's funny. It is kind of funny. Like, hey, there's that foreign dude over there. It looks like he's trying to make a video. Let's get the New Year's Eve horns and blow them as loud as we can blow them and see if we can't mess up his video. <laughs> hey, shout out to you. Great idea, mm. you know, mm. great idea. All right, so 
Oh, I like the smell. You like the smell? Yeah. <laughs> you know what? That smells a lot better than last night. Oh, oh it's good. All right, we got smoke now. Now we're throwing the smoke to it. I <laughs> said uh, last night, I said, uh, you're burning the smoker so that the mosquito will, yeah, yeah we can avoid the mosquito. <laughs> Hey, wherever I take my smoker, there ain't gonna be no dengue fever. <laughs> no dengue fever. No mosquitoes, baby. Yeah. I think I also ran the bats and the uh, birds off, too. They will be thankful to us. That's it. <laughs> Our neighbor. <laughs> yeah, uh, congratulations, all my neighbors. There's no more mosquitoes thanks to my, my smoker. <laughs> How long I can eat the chicken? Three hours? It's gonna take about three hours. I'm already hungry. <laughs> I know you're hungry, but see, this this is a little bit different than a barbecue. This is a smoker. It's like mang inasal, inasal. It's going to be more delicious than mang mm -hmm. inasal. I hope so. <laughs> Trust me, but it's going to take about three hours. Three hours so long, man. Right? Honey, when, when, when we kill a pig in the village, right, the lichon bad boy, how long does it take? One hour or uh, 30 minutes like that, one hour. Honey, when, when we kill a pig, then in the village and we make lichon bao boy how long does it take mm, it depends on all the size. night long right? no oy, it depends on the size if 30 kilos the pig manang three hours like that if it's uh, 50 five hours like no. that. i know well you may know more than me but every time <laughs> i've killed a pig in this country we, we kill them about midnight and you cook that thing till the sun comes up and eat about noon. No, I... Kuya is over there, over there with the bamboo taking turns. It will, if you will cook seven, seven in the morning, and um, it lasts eleven like that. Seven, say seven a.m. to eleven a.m. Baby, are we, are we talking about the same type of cooking? Lichon bad boy. You know, you put the pig on the stick. Yeah. And one kuya is there with the bamboo. Yeah. Uh, every time I've done it in this country, we, we kill around one in the morning, midnight, one in the morning, and it's not ready till the next day. <laughs> so I'm giving these chickens three hours. Three hours is so long. It might take more, it might take less. I don't know. <laughs> this is the first time we're cooking. A helicopter coming over. And the orbit over Hensonville. He ain't looking for me. One hour. Um, I pretty much maintain around two and a quarter to 250 for the most part, but when I added a bunch of charcoal, that shit started creeping up. And so it started creeping up on me. I closed the damper, but the easiest way to take the temperature down quickly, I just opened it up. Opened it up, let the heat out, closed it back, and then I closed the damper a little bit. So if we just take a look right here, um, I've been keeping it like somewhere in there because I had it wide open that was creeping up when I put that charcoal. So again, this is, this is an art, not an exact science. Uh, but what I'm going to do now, if, if my plan works out okay here, we're going to take a look and I'm going to flip the grates. I'm going to flip the script on these guys. Wow. <laughs> look at that. Look at that. Look wow. at that. So, ooh, that's going to be a little bit too hot. I got to switch over gloves here. New gloves. <laughs> yeah, folks, I tell you, I, I got some true barbecue weaponry going on here. Now, these are welder's gloves. They're not really meant for barbecuing, but if uh, you don't want to burn your hands when you're doing this here, this is what you need. So if you're going to do this flip like I'm doing, you know, I'm going to flip them over too, but I'm, I'm doing both. So they're getting turned on both axes. Because again, the heat is coming from this direction. Let me get these chickens. See if I can get the uh, 
It's not hot. Oh, it's hot, honey, but these are welding gloves. All right, so, yeah, just step back for me. Oh. There we go. So now each piece of chicken gets its turn closest to the fire. And again, these have been on there for one hour. Now look at there. I'm dripping chicken juice everywhere. Okay. Flip this dude over. Folks, everybody cooks different, right? Everybody cooks different. Like I said, cooking for me is trial and error. Everything is trial and error. So if you don't do the exact same thing that I'm doing, yeah, hey, leave your suggestions, comments, gripes, and concerns down below. Because historically, I'm not a I'm not a smoker. But I am now. All right, so let's see. Make sure we get these chickens centered. Centered over the drip pan. Now what they say is, obviously, if you're looking, you ain't cooking, right? But that's okay, because I only, I only peeked on this thing one time, and that was to lower the temp. You see, uh, see how that temperature just drops, because we just let all the heat out of there. All right, so I will go ahead and just adjust this man here so we can get our temp back up. Put our welding gloves back down below. Yes, these are overkill, but what you just saw me do, that's why I got these gloves. So I can spin that around. Clean my chicken juice off of here. <laughs> I've made a mess of this little wood shelf here. All right, I believe we need to add some charcoal and we'll add some smoke. All right, throw some more charcoal in there. A couple of, let's say three handfuls. If anybody wants to know how much I'm adding. Handful of uh, moistened wood chips and that's gonna put the smoke on it. All right, Flo, and I got some good news. I know you're hungry. Right. But the chicken wings, most people say you put them off for one hour, two and a quarter, then you take them up to 350 for 30 minutes. Now, at one point, this thing did go up to 350. So it's, it's been about an hour and 40 minutes. Yeah. So take a look at those wings right there. And I'm gonna ask Flo, do you think they're done or they need a little bit more? I think they need a little bit more. I think they need probably another 30 minutes. That's what I think. But I'm gonna tell you, those were sort of frozen. <laughs> they were frozen, right? <laughs> now, you're not supposed to put frozen yeah. <laughs> frozen meat on the uh, smoker, but we, we did because the chickens were ready to go. The whole chickens were ready. The wings weren't. That's probably why they need a little bit of extra time. Hey, cooking's all trial and error, folks. What do you do? You put some meat on the heat, you add vegetables and spice, and it's an art, it's not a science. How are we looking? Oh my goodness. You know, I'm one of the best chefs in the world, probably one of the world's worst uh, videographers. But it seems that I forgot to set the timer the last time I turned this chicken. And I've been out here and I drank me a couple beers and I've been watching this temperature, waiting for that timer to go off to tell me that it was another hour. It didn't go off. I finally checked it and apparently I didn't set the timer. My goodness. I mean, I had really messed this up, something terrible. So I've got to check this chicken. I got to check it, see what's going on. Flo went, got me a couple beers. Shout out to her, thank you very much. But then I caught her sneaking out. 
They told me they didn't have any money, which is always not true. I caught her sneaking out. I'm like, where are you going? She said, I'm going to the store. We don't have the sauce or something. I said, bring me a beer. Bring me a beer. She walked her ass back up the stairs, went to her sister and the sister. Wife number two gave her the secret stash to get me another beer. But here I am, done screwed up. The, uh, the first smoking operation here. Hello, I got some bad news. The timer didn't go off. I forgot to set the timer, so maybe now the chicken is burned. Just bring the beer, come up here, and let's see what, what we got, darling. I think these wings are done. No, they're not done yet. Those wings are close to being done, but, but they're not all the way done. Here we go. Oh, that's good. You think these are done? Yeah, the chicken wings. Oh yeah, they're done. They're they're light. Mmm. Folks, let's take a look at these smoked wings. Now that's a heavy one. That might need a few more minutes. But I think these these other wings are good to go. Now that's heavy too. I can tell by the weight. But I want y'all to check out them wings right there. Flo, just go ahead and focus on them smoked wings in that bowl. Mmm. Mm. Oh my goodness. Now, these two are a little bit chubby, like your sister. So I'm gonna put these back up here, okay? Yeah. It's still juicy, right? Yeah. Folks, good. these these birds are still just leaking delicious juice. And that is a proper drip pan in there. Oh, what do you think there, Fatima? I got a couple of fat wings up here, and I got these two birds right here down below. All right, but like we said, if you're looking, you ain't cooking. Uh, just, just one wing each, okay? I'll give you one wing each. All right, here we go, folks. The inaugural smoke, smoked chicken wings off of the new grill. You gotta see it in their face. <laughs> If I demise, took three nibbles of no comment. <laughs> what you think, baby? Hello? What's the verdict? Mm. Ladies, can I get some, some type of feedback? Hmm? It's juicy, but I think more salt. <laughs> yeah? We didn't put no salt on it, did we? Yeah. Need more salt? If I poured you a cup of salt, you would complain that it needs more salt. Beside the salt, how is the, is the meat? It's good. Better. Only good, not delicious? Not good delicious. Good for me. <laughs> So like Flo don't like the smoked meat. What about you, baby? I like it, but need more salt. Pull the wings off, gave him a taste test. Um, Flo wasn't impressed. Fatima liked them. Probably should a little bit put a little bit more emphasis on some type of seasoning, maybe a little marinade. Whoa. But good, bad, or ugly. I always give you an honest assessment. Here's what here's what I think. Okay. Number one, I'm very happy with this purchase. With that said, I would probably only use this thing as a smoker maybe twice a month. Uh, when you're smoking something, it's, you know, if you're in America, you got to wake up on a Saturday, get this thing going, and you know, maybe mow the grass for a minute, come back, check on it. You gotta have other things to do instead of just sitting here watching this smoker for hours. It's a lot of just manual labor of keeping this fire going. Okay, so even though I got plenty of time, I love to drink beer and I love to barbecue meat and I love to cook outdoors. 
I will probably only use this thing as a smoker twice a month. However, the thing doubles as a barbecue grill. It comes with that drip, drip pan, which you can also put charcoal in. And so I can use this thing as a charcoal grill every night. And that's probably what I will do. I will use it as a charcoal grill every night because we prefer the taste of charcoal over, you know, cooking with the gas grill. Now the gas grill is a lot easier. Um, but we prefer the taste of charcoal. That's all I gotta do, fill up the charcoal chimney, dump it in the grill, go to town. So most of my activity on this particular grill, I'm gonna use it as a grill, not as a smoker. Because smoking meat takes a lot of time, just a lot of uh, paying attention to it, paying attention to this guy here, and when I get to drinking, when I get to drinking, I forget about timers. I forget about looking at the temp. Uh, yo, the Rick Eraser. <laughs> a lot of assholes race up and down this road every day. Maybe I'll do a video, like, like record like a hundred of them some bitches and do a, do a collage of assholes racing up and down my street here. Anyhow, uh, folks, if you're looking for a great smoker, this is a great product. But if you've never owned a smoker before, I think you're going to quickly realize that you're more of a barbecue guy. And the good thing is you can use this as a barbecue grill. No problem. And they sell uh, grills without the, uh, the firebox. And they're actually cheaper. And when I first started looking at these, that's what I was looking at. But I'm glad I went with this one because I have the option to smoke or barbecue. So anyhow, that's my assessment. Um, you know, for everyday use, it's going to be a barbecue grill. Just put the charcoal in that tray. Make some absolutely delicious food. And then once every couple weeks when I got plenty of time and a cooler full of beer, I'll start smoking. Oh, another Rick Eraser. Folks, here's the final product. Now, no. it's just falling off the bone, but it took us a lot longer than we thought. How is it, baby? Uh -huh. This is better than the chicken wings. Better than the chicken wings? All right, so lesson learned, if we're gonna smoke something, we're gonna smoke whole chickens, you know, big pieces of meat. We're not gonna smoke chicken wings. Chicken wings, you grill. Whole chickens, you smoke. It's like uh, mang inasal. It's like mang inasal? Yeah. Tell really juicy it. inside. It's really juicy. Very juicy. That's what happens when you smoke the meat. Yeah. I like it. All right, well, I'll smoke chickens about once a month, but tomorrow night I'm barbecuing some pork chops. <laughs> this was an all-day affair for two chickens. That's the best tasting chickens in the Philippines, but it's that's a lot of work for two we chickens. We start 11, right? Yeah, what time is it now? Four. Hey, folks, I want to thank everybody for joining me on today's cooking show. Five hours to smoke two chickens. Now, the ladies were not impressed with the wings, and I'll be honest, they, the wings weren't anything special, but they don't look like those chickens. Those chickens in there are so juicy and moist. They're not talking much because they're sitting there nibbling. They'll nibble things right down to the bone. If you don't watch them, they'll eat the bone too. I will probably be barbecuing on this piece of gear every night, at least every other night. And I'm already excited that tomorrow night is gonna be pork chops. All right, folks, thanks for joining me. I'll see you guys on the next one. Hope you have a wonderful day. Wherever you're at on this beautiful planet that we call the Earth, I'm sitting here watching the sun go down. But I'm out of beer, so that's why I got to cut this video. I got to go out and find me a bottle of liquor or some beer or something to uh, just celebrate life, celebrate the day. See you fine folks on the next one. Peace out, my friends.